Hello, guys. Hello, Rob. Yeah. How are you? Hello, Rob. How are you? That's good. Is everyone well? Thank Hello, God. Bro. Yeah. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. How are you all doing? All right. Oh, fine, fine. fine. Thank you, Rob. Drive? Whoa. It's very nice to see you while you're driving. Thanks, Rob. Hi, Rav. Shalom, Rav. Shavu Tov. Shavu Tov. Mubarak. Purim Sameach to you. Purim Sameach, yeah. It was Purim. Three-day Purim. Like your drusha. And that's what we're going to speak today. Purim Meshulash. What is Purim Meshulash? That's going to be the subject of the Shaul, Be'ezrat Hashem. That's what we're going to speak today. And I want to tell you something, Dr. Lez. I have the privilege and the honor to say Kaddish for your late mom. Wow, Rev, the, how come? It's amazing. I can to you, uh, uh, I go to, you know, I go to College Muse to Daven outside in the, in the complex and uh, Michael was, uh, couldn't come. He was busy operating and he sent a message that if someone can say Kaddish. So I took the opportunity and I feel like obligating, and I say Kaddish for Tamar Bat Zehava. Oh, you're right. Thank you so no, please much. Please, God, should pleasure. Wow. Should please, God, be aliyat neshama. Anyway, I would like. I'm going to mute everyone because we're going to start with the show now, and uh, and uh, we'll go from there. And the subject of the show is going to be Purim Meshulash. What is Purim Meshulash? It's what you call it in English the three days of Purim. But before we start, I would like to delegate the show for a number of people. Be'ezrat Hashem na'asev v'natzliach, ve'ashem alenu b'rahama v'yarviach. Ashur yeh le'ilui nishmat ester kaden bat ketziah, Mordechai ben Rahma, Arav Avram Haim ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar bat Zehava, Rachel bat Malka Sultana, Rivka Lea bat David, Ester bat Moshe Halevi, Haim Kalman ben Haim Kalman. ולרפואת, in the health of ליאורה בת מרים, מנשה נג'י בן פרחה, אורנה בלומה בת מרים, הרב אברהם בן מרימה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, משה בן דבורה, דבורה בת אסתר, אביבה בתיה בת שינה קיילה, משה מאיר בת בן חנה, חנה שרה בת דבורה, שלמה פנחס בן שינה פישה. בעזרת השם רפואה שלמה תודם on the whole klal Israel. So last week Sunday our friend Anthony asked us a question. Ask us that what's happening in Jerusalem and I explained to them that we actually celebrating pouring on Friday and on Sunday. And he asked and I see that he said okay but from the answer after that I was thinking I should to explain more, but uh, I didn't. So I take the opportunity and I will explain it today. So what is Purim Meshulash? What happened this year was Purim Meshulash. And I will explain. Purim Meshulash, it means three days of Purim. What is Purim Meshulash? What does it mean? Purim Meshulash, it happened when the 15th of Adar, Tedva Adar, fall on the Shabbos. And then there is all the law of Purim get changed a bit. And it happened usually, Purim Meshulash happened, and it's applicable, okay? It's relevant for the people that live in Jerusalem and those that live by Arim Mukafot Homa. What it means, Arim Mukafot Homa, city that surround with wall from the time of Yeshua Binun. That's what it means, <coughs> Purim Meshulash. Okay. What exactly happened? What exactly happened? We know that Hazal tell us that we're not allowed to read Megillah on Shabbat. The same like we're not allowed to blow the shofar on Shabbat. And the main reason for it is because it's mukta. The shofar is mukta on Shabbat and the Megillah also mukta on Shabbat. Therefore, they can't read the Megillah on Shabbos because that the 15th of Adar and usually 15 of Adar, what we call Shushan Purim, that's 
when the people of Jerusalem that live in Jerusalem and live on a city that surround with wall from the time of Yoshua Binun celebrate Purim. So what's happened on that? Because they can't carry the Megillah, because the Megillah it's Mukta, and therefore you're not to allowed to carry it in a public domain, they can't read the Megillah on Shabbat. So what's happening? So first of all, we have to explain that Purim Meshulash happened over three days. It happened on a Friday, it happened on a Saturday, and it happened on a Sunday. And that's only applicable, and I repeat that, it's only applicable for the people that live in Jerusalem and people that live in, is, uh, that, in a world that surround their city from the time of Yoshua Binun. That's called Arimu Kafot Homa. If there is city like this, okay? For example, Jericho have it, but who live, which Jew will live there? But anyway, that's not the point. Okay, so let's explain now what is Purim Meshulash and the law of Purim Meshulash. So what do we do on Purim Meshulash? What is those people that live in Jerusalem, those people that live around the, in the places that was a wall from the time of Yoshua Binun, Arim Mukafot Homa, what, how they celebrate Purim Meshulash? Because for them, it's very difficult. Why? Because we explained that they can't read the Megillah on Shabbat. So when they should read the Megillah? When they're doing the Saudat Purim, when they're doing Mishloach Manot, when they give Matanot La'evyonim. That's the question that we have to answer by Ezrat Hashem tonight. So we explain that Purim Meshulah stretch over three days. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now by Ezrat Hashem will explain. So first of all, we say that it starts on a Friday. On a Friday, we know that this Friday was the 14th, because if the 15th of Adar fall on Shabbat, the Friday will be the 14th. So what did they do? On the night of the 14th, that means on a Thursday, okay, in, in Yerushalayim, and Arim Shemukafot Choma, and Arim HaPezurot, Arim HaPezurot, it's like Tel Aviv, the diaspora, that there is no walls from the time of Yeshua Abinun, they read the Megillah, the same like we read. On the same day that we read, that means Thursday night, they read the Megillah. Then they repeat and read the Megillah when? On Friday. Okay. After they read the Megillah, they have to do another mitzvah. But what did they do on Friday? They do the same like us, Matanot La'evyonim. But, they don't give Mishloach Manot and they don't do the sell down on a Friday. On Shabbos, on Shabbos, because we know that in Purim during the day, we read in the Torah. On the morning, when we read in Tefillat Shaharit, we read in the Torah, Vayavo Amalek in Parashat Beshalah. We'll get to it now. So what did they do on Shabbat? Because they're not allowed to read the Megillah and already they read the Megillah. Okay, so what's happening now? On Shabbat, that really it's Shushan Purim for them, that it's the 15th of Adar, what did they do? They take two Sifre Torah. On the first Sefer Torah, seven people going up to the Sefer Torah, the same like everyone else, the Parshat HaShavua, and they read Parshat HaShavua. After they read the Parshat Tashavua, on the second Sefer Torah, the Maftir come. Okay, the person that do the Aftara, okay, he's going and he read in Parashat Beshalach in chapter 15, verse 8. There he read Vayavo Amalek. And then the Haftara he'll do in a book of Shmuel, the prophet Shmuel, Shmuel 2, Shmuel Be, that means Shmuel 2. And he gonna read in chapter 15 from verse one until verse 34. The only difference is that the Ashkenazim start from verse two until verse 34, include 34. That means that the Sfaradim read one verse extra on the Haftarah. Okay, what else they do? They do something that we don't do anymore. 
what did they do? And all the four tefillot that they have, that's mean Friday night, that's mean Arvit of Friday night, Mariv of Friday night, Shaharit of Shabbat, Musaf of Shabbat, and Minha of Shabbat, Rabotai, they have to add up Alanisim. And all of those tefillot, they say Alanisim. Okay? Also, and Birkat, uh, and Birkat Amazon, when they say Birkat Amazon, okay, they, they have to say Alanisi, okay, because that day is Purim for them, okay. So we learn Friday and Saturday, what they do on a Sunday, because we say that Purim Meshula stretch over three days. So we answer three, two days from the three. On a Sunday, like today, what they done in Yerushalayim, Rabota, it's only in Yerushalayim. It's not in all the city of Israel. Don't get mistake. It's only in Yerushalayim and only those city that was surrounded with walls from the time of Yeshua Binun. On a Sunday, that it's already the 16th of Adar, okay? They do the Saudat Purim. Okay, they do the Sauda, and the main reason that they do the Sauda on Sunday and not on Shabbat, the, the reason is that they cannot mix the two Saudot. So what happened? Where do we learn that? Hazal tell us in the Megillah, um, it's not Hazal, it's Mordechai and Esther, tell us in the Megillah in chapter 9, verse 22, they say something very interesting. La'asot otam yeme simcha, that means that you should make the day of Purim a day of a feast and a joy. That means that Saudat Purim, the meal of Purim, have to be specifically for Purim. Therefore, you can't mix it with Shabbat. Why? Because the Saudah of Shabbat cannot mix with another Saudah. That means you cannot mix two Saudot. That means that Sauda of Purim have to be separately. That means that it have to be for the sake of Purim. You understand what I'm saying? It can't be on the part of the Saudot of Shabbat. And all of those three days that we mentioned, that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, those people don't say Tahanun and they don't say Nefilat Apai. Although there is a Mahloket, people like us that live, that live in Arima Puzot, that live outside those city that's surrounded with wall or that we don't live in Jerusalem, should we say Tahanun or not? So there is opinion that say, because it's Shushan Purim, it's still Shushan Purim for the people in Yerushalayim. And those people that live the Arim Mukafot Homa, okay, we should not say Tahanun. Ado, Ado, that's Paskin, that's uh, Psak, it's not so clear. Most of the Poskim, and I see that Tarav Ovadia Zecher Tzadik Vekadosh Libracha wrote in Hazon Ovadia Yichot Purim, that we should say Tahanun today, okay? But Yerushalayim, people that live in Jerusalem, and those that people in a city that surround with a wall from the time of Yeshua Binun, they don't say Tahanun. Also, Purim Meshulash, the people of Jerusalem merit to have it and to, to benefit from it for three days. And the people that living in a, in a city that's around the walls from the time of Yeshua Binun, they merit to happen. You know when is it merit to happen? When Leila Seder fall on Motze Shabbos. When Leila Seder is on Motze Shabbos, then they'll have Purim Meshulash. Now, we, we have to ask ourselves a very valid question. We have a very valid question here. How come that we read the Megillah on Thursday night, on Friday, not only we, those people that live in Jerusalem and the people that live in a city that's surrounded with war. They read it on Thursday night and Friday. But the Sauda, they do when on a Sunday. Why they don't do it on a Friday? We have to understand. So we have to explain like this, that the main reason that, first of all, that they read the Megillah on Thursday night, on Friday, 
because it's in the Megillah in chapter 9. In verse 27, that's mean. The Megillah Mordechai and Esther that wrote the Megillah Esther tell us specifically that the reading of the Megillah should be done on a specific day. What does it mean? That's mean that you have to do the Megillah before the Sauda. Why? Hazal explained that the, before you eat, you have to publicize the miracle. How can you do a feast and then publicize the miracle? <laughs> it's backwards. No, Hazal said, first you publicize the miracle. So how do we publicize the miracle? By that, that we read the Megillah. And if we read the Megillah, we publicizing the miracle that happened in Purim to the Jewish people in 127 countries. So Hazal explained, and the Poskim Paskim, that first thing that you have to do what? Publicize the, the miracle. And that have to be when? On Thursday and Friday. So why we don't do then the Sodom Shabbos? Because we explain that you can't mix the Sodot of Shabbat and the Sodah of Purim together. And ma'avivim simcha besimcha. Why? Because Shabbos is a Shabbos. And when I eat, I eat. Because if I put it together, I will never remember to do a soda for the sake of Purim to publicize the miracle. So now you can ask, okay, that's fair enough. Why not on a Friday? Because Friday for them is not a Purim. But you can read the Megillah le Mafreya. That means you can read the Megillah to publicize the miracle before, there's no problem. So what did Hazal constitute for us? Because Tedvav was a Shabbat, you can't do a Sauda. So what do you do on Shabbat? You just read the, the, the parasha, Vayavo Amalek, okay? But the Sauda, when do they do? They do the Sauda on a Sunday. What it mean on a Sunday? That mean on a Sunday, it say, especially, on the on on uh, Megillah in chapter nine verse twenty one, liot osim et ayom azeh. That mean from here Hazal learned that the seuda can be dafka during the day and not at night. What does it mean? People that doing the seuda purim on a night didn't fulfill the mitzvah of seuda purim. The seuda purim Hazal pasken and the poskim pasken lealacha should be during the day. You can say maybe they'll do it Motzei Shabbos. No, because you don't feel the, 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 the mitzvah of doing it on Motzei Shabbos. In that case, Hazal said, do it on a Sunday. So what's happening? On a Sunday, that that's already the 16, not the 15 of Adar, the 16 of Adar, what did they do? They do the Sauda, but they don't say ala nisim, when they davening. That means that they do the Saudat Purim on Sunday. And here come a, a different idea. The Kabbalistic, the mystical rabbi explained to us that they should do it before midday. Although the, the custom of most of the people in Jerusalem and the city that surround with walls from the time of Yeshua Binun, they custom to do it after midday. But it doesn't make, make a difference. Vice versa, the Seuda should be done on a Sunday, okay? And then when they do it on a Sunday, they have no problem, okay? Also, we have to understand that the main idea behind it, that they do the Seuda on a Sunday, they also have to give Mishloach Manot. That means on a Sunday today in Jerusalem and a city that's around with wall, they done the Sauda and they given Mishloach Manot Ish By that they fulfill. So what's the idea behind all of it? Where do we learn that they have to do it? So we say Bayom. Like it say, Liyot Osim et Azeh. That means the Sauda should be during the day and they can't do it on Motzeh Shabbos. Why not on Motzeh Shabbos? Because it doesn't, you say the Chovah on Motzeh Shabbos. 
Therefore, in Jerusalem, in a city that's around for the wall, with walls from the day of Yeshua, we don't do the Sauda today. And we explain that the Kabbalistic rabbi said before midday. That's the Kabbalistic. Whoever follow mystical and is a Kabbalistic can do it. If not, you can do it after midday. There's no problem. Now, now come the problem. We say that you cannot say Alanisim. On a Sunday, you don't say Ala Nisi. Why? And none of the tefillot today in Jerusalem, they say Ala Nisi. Ado, Ado, here's come the big Ado. And that's what many people will get confused. When they do the Sauda, when they do the benching, okay, and Birkat Amazon, they have to add up Ala Nisim. Not only that they have to add up Ala Nisim, there is some that add up extra, where it say Arahaman, is to add up our Haman. Yase Imanu Nisim Veniflaot, Kishem Sarasala Avotenu, Bayamim Ahem, Bazman Azeb, Imem Mordechai Vestel. So we see from here that on a Sunday they spread the Purim for three days. On Thursday night, Friday, what they do? They do two things. They read the Megillah and Matanot Live Yonim. I repeat again. On Shabbos, they do the Kiriat Torah that we usually do on a Friday morning, they do it on Shabbos. The Saudat Purim, they do on a Sunday, and Mishloach Manot, they do on a Sunday, but on a Sunday, they don't say Allah Nisi. Although they say it on Shabbos. Why? Because for them, Purim fall on Shabbat. The design that it's a Sunday, like today, they can't say Allah Nisi. The only thing that they have to say Allah Nisi when they do the Sauda, why? Because the Sauda is for the sake of Purim. And if the Sauda is for sake of Purim, you have to add up Allah Nisi. Like we add it up on Friday. So from here we see what is Purim Meshulash. Basically Purim Meshulash, it means that it's spread over three days when, when the uh, 16, the, 15, the 15 of Adar fall on a Shabbos. That means that they make the Kriyata Megillah earlier, they read the Megillah earlier, and they give Matanot Live Yonim earlier. On Shabbos, they only read, they only read the Alanisim, okay? Uh, sorry, Vayavo Amalek, they have to read that in Parashat Beshalah. There they read the Parashat Beshalach, Vayavo Amalek Lilahem Israel. And then on Sunday, like today, in Jerusalem and all the city that surround with walls, they do the Saudat Purim and they do Mishloach Manot Ish Lere'el. And the only thing that they can add up Al Anisim is only on Birkat Amazon of the Saudat Purim. Now, if they eat a different meal that it's not the Sauda of Purim, sorry, they cannot say Allah Nisim. Any question, Rabotai, if you have any question regarding the subject, please unmute the microphone and you can ask. Okay, Is there any I question, Rob? Rob? These people, yeah, who's, what, who's speaking? What, it's Mark, Mark speaking. Yes, Marky. Um, Jerusalem today has spread far beyond the walls of the, of the old city. Now, does that still fall under the 15th or does that, or outside the walls of Jerusalem fall under the 14th? Okay, so there is a Shiloh for many years. They have a quick, wait, on here, there's a hell of a noise and I think that it's killing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to mute because these people making a hell of a noise in the background, and I can't talk if there is noise in the back. I really. I mean, in the, in the last few years, Jerusalem has spread kilometers outside the walls. Okay. Is there so, still clusters inside the walls or outside the walls? Very, very good question you ask. For many years, because I'm born in Jerusalem, and and it's had nothing to do with the city of the wall of Jerusalem. It have to deal with Jerusalem. The city that was surrounded with walls from the time of Yeshua Binun, it's Gaza. Okay, one of the cities was Gaza that was a wall in the time of Yeshua Binun. Jericho have a wall that's around the city in, 
the entire city of Jericho with wall. So the wall of Jerusalem have nothing to do with that. What it have to do with that, and here come the question that I'm answering you now. Ramot, the city of Ramot, if you know the city of Ramot to Jerusalem, for many years was, was a bit of a space between Jerusalem and the city of Ramot, because yep. Ramot was a different city, okay? Or for example, if you know Jerusalem a little bit well, when you drive to the old city, there is a city that called Ma'ale Adumim. I'm sure that you know it. So when you drive to those city, are they connected to Jerusalem? What it's considered connecting, that there is no space between them. That means there is no field, okay, between them. That means it's all the time houses. It's not just road. It have to be houses connecting to another houses. So for many years, Ramot was not connected to Jerusalem. And Ramot, although that it's considered part of the city of Jerusalem, it's considered Arim Peruzot, that they used to do it in New Dalet. Today, mm -hmm. because Ramot, you explain that the city of Jerusalem spread with building kilometers and kilometers, Baruch Hashem, the Ramot become part of Yerushalayim, and they celebrate on the 15th of Adar. You follow, Mark? Right. I hope that I answered yep. the answer. Yeah, so question. all those, all those new uh, suburbs that surround Yerushalayim today are considered part of inside the walls. So they all, they all no, uh, do no. it on the 15th. Mark, let me explain. It has nothing to do with inside the wall. The wall, the wall that you see today that surround the old city of Jerusalem, that's the wall that not been built by the time of Yeshua Binu. That wall been built much later by, uh, by, by the Muslim, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, how you call it? I forgot his name. No, The city of Jerusalem have nothing to do with the wall. The city of Jerusalem have to do with Jerusalem. What are we talking about? Because Yeshua Binun was before David and Melech built the wall for the Bet HaMikdash. Mm, mm, Not talking mm. about Bet HaMikdash, and that's where you confuse. For example, mm. Jerusalem is Jerusalem, but what's connected to Jerusalem, for example, Ma'ale Adumim, that it's only a few kilometers from Jerusalem once that you leave, and though that there is space between them, between the last house of Jerusalem to the first house of Ma'ale Adumim, there is a lot of empty space. It's not part of Yerushalayim. And, and what's the sad part about it? That they can't celebrate on the 15th. They celebrate uh -huh. on the 14th. The same like, like us. So the wall yeah. of Jerusalem have nothing to do with that. Nothing okay, to so do with as long as there's no distance it's between the the Muslim sheikh that in a time of Ottoman, when he took, when they conquered uh, Israel, when they con conquered Israel, he built that wall around the old city. That's called the old city, not Jerusalem. There's a difference between okay. the old city and Jerusalem. Okay, I hope Got that it. I cleared myself. You did indeed. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Uh, Rabota, anyone else that wanted to ask question, please unmute the microphone and you can ask because it was two people. Who wanted to ask? Uh, to Anthony, it's very clear now. I understand what you said last week. I got the, got the answer nice and clearly now. Thanks very much. Pleasure, Anthony. Any other question about uh, regarding Purim Meshulash? We see that Purim Meshulash, first of all, it, I forget to mention, it can happen on a leap year and not on a leap year. It makes no difference. As long, as long that the 15 of Adar fall on Shabbat, that's considered pulling meshulash. Pulling meshulash, where if you translate it to English, it's a triangle pulling, but it's not the right thing. The, the right explanation is the three days of pulling because for the men, for the people that live in Jerusalem and those people that live uh, in a city that was surrounded of walls, and it have nothing to do if they Jewish or not Jewish, as long as the city was surrounded with walls. Because Jericho, when Yeshua Binun, we explain when we learn about the book of, of uh, Yeshua, 
the city of Jer Jericho was surrounded with walls. And at that time, was no Jewish people there. Who was there? Rahab. But I do so. If there is people that live in Jericho, that first of all, you're not allowed to have people living in Jericho. It's one of the decree that Yeshua Binun made that no Jews can live in Jericho and no Jews allowed to build it. Okay. And Has Shalom, if a Jewish person tried to build it, there's a, there's a curse on it. And, and, and it's, it's, it's uh, the Hazal tell us in a, in a Nevi'im that one of the people that tried to build it, he lost all of his kids because he tried to build it. Because there is a decree of Yeshua not to build it. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, city that's surrounded with wall, I have to explain it. It has nothing to do with the city of Jerusalem because the wall of the old city have nothing to do with that. The wall of the old city come many, many years later in the time of the Ottoman, when the, I forgot the name of the Sheikh that built the wall around the old city. But that have nothing to do with the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem much bigger. And that's what happened. That today they found out that, uh, for example, Ramot, that where the prophet uh, Shmuel, Shmuel Ramati, Prophet Shmuel was from Ramot, Shmuel Ramati, Ramati is Ramot. Okay, but because today it's very close to Jerusalem and these houses all the way, it's part of Jerusalem. For example, the other way, from the other way, that Ma'ale Adumim, on a way to the, day, to the Dead Sea, that it's not far from Jerusalem, also a few kilometers just outside Jerusalem, but because there is quite a bit of space between the last house from Jerusalem to the first house of Jerusalem, it doesn't consider Jerusalem, Therefore, therefore, it's considered Arim Peruzot. Arim Peruzot is like Ma'ale Adumim, Tel Aviv, Haifa, and all of that. And those city, those city, they read on a 14, the same like we read in the Espra. Mm -hmm. But, but, for example, if you take the city of Ashkelon, okay, it was a wall there. So there is some, someone to say, that Ashkelon, because it was a wall with the Palestine, that, that city of Ashkelon was surrounded with a wall, okay, around it. Some people want to say that Ashkelon is, but Le'alacha, it's considered Arim Peruzot, Arim Peruzot, that they didn't have walls, that the simple translation. And they read on the 14, the same like we read here in South Africa, and in many, uh, most of the countries uh, in, um, in the diaspora that we read on the 14th, but in Yerushalayim and those city that was surround with walls from the time of Yeshua Binun, okay, those city, those city read on the 15. And because the 15 is Shabbat, the 15 is Shabbat, because we can't read the Megillah, we explain because you're not allowed to carry because the Megillah is Mukte, and you're not allowed to carry in public domain, they're not allowed to read the Megillah. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, there is any question? There is any other question? Yes, sir, are there any, uh, effectively, halakhically, <clears throat> are there any other cities that we know today which are surrounded, which are considered uh, uh, walled in the time of your So I explain. For example, there is some people that want to say that Caesarea, but I don't ah. think that Caesarea is because the first scheme doesn't start. There is a question about a, um, the city that are surrounding with wall is Gaza. We know that Gaza was surrounded with wall. We know that Jericho was surrounded with wall. Because Hazal tell us that when Yeshua Binun came to conquer, came to conquer those cities, they have walls. And we know that even before Yeshua, that the Plishtim, the Plishtim lived where in Gaza. Stephen, are you with me? Well, so, so the is it considered or not? It's considered mold. Sorry? So my, my, we want you to know, so if, if when you're sure broke the wall, there's still considered a wall because it was walled during his time. Is that right? 
So even though yeah. Bishop broke the walls, it's still considered uh, a wall to Joshua ben Not not only from even if it was before the time of Joshua ben Nun. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. It was from before Joshua ben Nun until the time of Joshua ben Nun. Right. Good. Me me Joshua ben Nun. Now it has nothing to do with the wall that surrounds the old city. Many people get confused with that. That has nothing to do with that. When Bene Israel left Egypt, what is it uh, in, in a parsha? That the Kadosh Baruch didn't want to take Bene Israel through Eretz Plishtim. Okay? Why? Shema Yireh Milhama. And they're going to want to go back to Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, so Hazal explained that some of those cities have walls before Yeshua Binun and after. So until Yeshua, whatever was before, until Yeshua Binun, that's considered Arim, okay? Mukafot uh, Homa. Arim Peruzot, Peruzot, it means that doesn't have walls around them. You follow, Stephen? I hope that I explained my. Okay, so from here we see there are certain places that they are Arim Mukafot Homa, and there is certain that not, and we know some of them. If you want, I can check it, I can look at it, uh, which one considered to, today beside Jerusalem, beside uh, uh, um, Yericho, and beside Gaza. Those three for sure, they, there is a question about Ashkelon. Why? Because Ashkelon. It's very close to the Plishtim. You remember? How, How do, do we you... know that Ashkelon was close to the, Bishli, the Plishtim? Shimshon. With Shimshon, Bidyuk, the prophet Shimshon. Shimshon was one of the judges that the Jewish people had. And what happened? He took a wife from the Plishtim. He took Lila, you remember? You yeah. call it the Lila in English. Okay. Yeah. So it was very close to Gaza. Yeah. And, uh, and you see that today, Gaza and, and Ashkelon, it's not far at all. It's very, very close. So there is a question, is Ashkelon considered part of Arim Mukafot Homa? You follow? Got it. Or not? OK, any other question? Hope that the answer, I hope that the answer the subject. If you have any specific question. Any pleasure in Iran and Persia and those places? We, know, we don't know anything about them, do we, at this, today? Oh, 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 very good. Shushan, Shushan, Shushan was Arim Mukafot Homa. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And today, Shushan. today would, so if they were the rest of the, the rest of the rest of uh, Persia, no. Why? Yeah. Because there wasn't ever a war. Because we know that the, the Shushan Abira, that Shushan, the capital, at that time, have a war. And it said that the yeah. Shushan Abira, the, it tell us specifically on the 15, you remember? Well, all the other was on 14. You remember? It said specifically. I on the and but and today, we, there aren't any Jews in Shushan today. What's Shushan? And today, Shushan. I say today, Shushan. Uh, today, Shushan would still be considered a walled city, but there are no sure. Jews in Shushan. For sure. sure, it has nothing to do. It have nothing to do uh, if the time change. It have to do, and isn't that time was a wall? Yes, yeah. they celebrate yeah. in Shushan. You remember Shushan. the Megillah specifically say. Do you know where Shushan is today? Shushan, Shushan today is uh, what we call Amadan. Amadan. Amadan, is that in Iran? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Persia. Yeah. So they. Yeah, okay, Adam, it's... that you want to ask a question. Adam, Bechabot. Adam? Yes, hi. You... Hi, how are you, hi. Adam? Thank God, very well. Thanks, Rabbi. And you? Enjoying it. Um, what is the actual reason why? On the fifth, uh, in walled cities, we read on the 15th. Okay. Because in a Megillah, if you read, it says in a Megillah, it says specifically that the Yudalid, the Yudalid on a 14th 
of Adar, that was the city outside Shushan, they got a permission, they got a permission to kill. You remember that they got to kill? Right. So those called Arim Peruzot. Arim Peruzot were city without walls. And they got a permission. And then was the change of the decree. You remember the decree was to kill the Jews that Haman wanted to do. But after that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu make a miracle that Hashverosh hang Haman HaRasha, okay? And he given a permission to Mordechai to change the decree from the Jews. And then the Jews done for the Amalekim what they wanted to do for us. Right. And then Esther came after that, you remember, and she asked the king, please, would you give us another day, you remember? It's said specifically in the Megillah that they can do again the decree on Shushan. And then they celebrate it when? On a 15. While the, the cities that outside Shushan that was without wall, they celebrate it when? On a 14. You follow, Adam? Right, so... So was it just a geographic thing or, or, or not? I mean, like, how can we celebrate on the 14th if we only had the miracle on the 15th? No, the miracle was on a 15th or no 14. No, the miracle is already done on the 13th. Why? Because Haman wanted to hang all the Jews when? On the 13th. Uh, okay, so we, we got it reversed. Hashem reversed it first on the 14th. Akadosh Baruch Hu reversed that decree. And the permission come, the permission come to start killing and to celebrate when on the 14. When did we start celebrating? When when uh, Hashbarosh given the ring to Mordechai and Mordechai changed the decrees. You remember he changed the igrot. What day was that? The that the was fifth. on the 13 and on the 14. They already starting to do what the enemies wanted to do to the Jewish people. So I'm still not understanding why, why on the 15th then? Because the 15th, Esther asked for extra day, you remember? Oh, okay, so it's just if in the text. The Megillah, Esther okay. asked. Okay, that okay so that it's just in the Megillah. Draft. It's all in the text, otherwise we wouldn't. Right. And then if I can ask you something yeah. else, so it's just interesting yes. is that you mentioned that um, the Megillah is Muktzah and Shabbos. Like, why would a scroll, a Torah scroll, yeah. a scroll be Muktzah? Like, I, I can understand a shofar, you know, Very maybe. Good. Good. You're not allowed to carry it in public domain. The same like you're not allowed to carry a shofar. What's wrong with a shofar? And I'll explain. Because... Sorry, who's speaking? My, my wife wants to know what is, what the, is the problem with. Rega, Rega, you can't carry with the Arab. It has nothing to do with the Arab. It has to do with Mukte. Are you allowed to carry a cell phone on Shabbat? No, because it's Mukte. We have to explain why is the Megillah Mukte and why is the Shofar Mukte. That's what you must ask. It has nothing to do with the Eruv. It's a mukte, we explain. And mukte, you're not allowed to carry in public domain. You're not allowed to carry it. Why? Shema, Shema is a dek. It might gonna be a crack on the shofar, and now you wanna fix it. You want it to fix it. The same with the scroll. It might gonna get here, or it might gonna get scratched, and you want it to fix it on Shabbat. You understand now? It's yeah. mukte. You follow? Right. So it's have nothing to do. It's have nothing to do with the eruv. I hope that I explained that. Adam, is that okay? But but, but with with the two day with the two day fourteenth and fifteenth, is it that the, on the fourteenth all all fighting stopped in the Rapuzot, but in Shushan they carried on and it stopped only on the fifteenth. That's why there's two days. There's two days for. For Purim. Because, because 
אסתר אסק פור אקסטרה דיי אין שושן. בגלל אוס פורטין, אוס פורטין, אוס פורטין, אוס פורטין, אין שושן, אין הערים הפרזות. אבל אסתר אסק פור אקסטרה דיי. אבל מה היה הרעיון פור אקסטרה דיי? אתם יודעים למה היא אסקה פור אקסטרה דיי? כדי להשתמש יותר אנשים, כדי להשתמש יותר אנשים. אוקיי. What difference right. does it make? May please God, it will be all the time to destroy the descendants. Enough, of enough, 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 enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope that everyone understand. Adam, did you understand? I hope that I explain properly. Adam? Yes, yes, thanks. I just, I guess I wasn't understanding the difference between like a normal Torah scroll on Shabbat. A normal Torah scroll, we not, there's no question of us wanting to repair it if it gets cracked. But also Torah, but also Torah, you're not allowed to carry on Shabbat. Uh, you follow? You're not allowed uh, to carry Torah in public domain. Uh, okay. Hmm? You follow? Yeah, thank you. Lo motiyim sefer al ha'ir. L'rachot ha'ir. Okay. Okay? The problem that has v'shalom, that something happened. You know what I'm saying? But the Megillah, First of all, it's not Sefer Torah, you have to understand. But <clears throat> that's the, that the scroll, it's a scroll. Mm. But it's not, it's not Sefer Torah. It's made from scroll, yes. But there's a big difference between, sure. sorry, <laughs> between the holiness of Sefer Torah to the holiness of Megillah. It's two different things. We, we have to make the definition, huh? Mm. Okay. Any Thank other you. question that you wanted to ask? Yes, Rav, why, why is the only the, the Megillah, is Megillah the Esther the only one that's written on scroll and we have to read from a scroll or are there other Megillahs that, that we should also read from a scroll? Okay. For example, we have another Megillot. We have uh, uh, we have another Megillot, but the other Megillot, for example, Shira Shirim, And that we don't have to read from the scroll. Why do we have to read Lehatchila? Because we have to publicize the miracle. You follow, Stevie? Steve? To publicize, to publicize the miracle. Okay, I understand that. But, we have but, to read but, from the scroll. Uh-huh. So, so, how, so is it because of... But what is the connection between the public publicization of the miracle and the scroll as such? Because divrei ha'igeret azot, what do you, what do you read? Ah, you read it. It says divrei ha'igeret azot. Uh, right, it. of course. It has to be a scroll. You can't take yeah. a book and say that's igeret. It's not, that's not an igeret, right. It's so it's a reenactment <laughs> of that igeret, that's what it says. Look, the same, the same, like it was in the time of Mordechai and Esther. Got it, got it. You follow? Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, any other question? I hope that I can answer more questions. Thank you very much. Okay, Rabota. Yeah, Rab, you know what? Can I just mention something? Um, yeah. Okay, you know, when we were doing Al Han, on Shabbos, when we were doing Al Hanisim, so in the Art Scroll Siddur, um, it doesn't have Purim. Can you believe it? On, uh, on Shabbos, in the, for, uh, when you go on to Al Hanisim, in the Art Scroll, it, it only says for Hanukkah, not for Purim. Really? Yeah, it's an amazing thing. I tell, Have a look. tell you why. You know Because why in Chusta Aritz, Chusta Aritz, Purim can exactly. never be on Shabbos. Because Art Scroll, where is it printed? In America. It's amazing. America. They've got an Israel edition, but there's a lot of Art Scrolls, American Art Scrolls in Israel. And I had to go back to the, uh, you know, I couldn't use the Shabbos uh, Alain Isim. It's not been printed in United States. It's a matter of fact printed in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. New York is part of Arim Peruzot. What does it mean, Arim Peruzot? Arim she'enam mukafot homa. And there, in that case, it can never happen. Yeah. It will never happen. Okay? That Shabbat, will, that Purim will fall on Shabbat. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, and Rab, thanks for saying, thanks for saying Kaddish okay. for, for my mom, really, thank you so much. That would be good. 
It's only pleasure for all the, the hard work that you do for us. No, it's not hard it's work. It's, a, it's not hard work at all. It's, it's just such a good to do it. It's not a hard work at one bit. Anyone want to ask any more question, Rabotai? Thanks, no? Rob. We appreciate this year. It was very good. Okay. Thank you no, very thank much. You, Rob. Thank you Please. very much. Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That we should all merit, like a who will make miracle with us, the same like he done in a time of Mordechai and Esther, that we all merit to see speedily in our day miracle that Akadosh Baruch will send us Mashiach Tzitkenu, and we see Amen. the building of the third Bet Amigdash in our day. Amen. 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 Amen.